Tom, you better bring this home. There's no excuse. There's no excuse. Tom Emmer, great guy. We're going to bring this home. I want to thank everybody. I want to thank our next Vice President of the United States, J.D. Vance. And I especially want to thank the great state of Minnesota. We love Minnesota. Before we begin, I want to condemn the evil attack on Israel that took place earlier today. A missile launched by Hezbollah killed at least a dozen children, young children. And uh, they were playing, as you heard, on a soccer field in Israeli territory on the Golan Heights, a place that I recognized during my administration as under Israel's sovereignty. It was a big thing. I've been trying to get it done for 72 years. I got it done in about one hour. The savage Hezbollah terrorists struck these children with an Iranian precision missile. Dozens more were wounded in the attack, and sadly, the death toll is probably going to go very substantially higher. Our hearts go out to the families of these innocent children. No parent should have to suffer the terrible loss of a child at the hands of terrorists or anybody else. Today's attack on Israel cannot be forgotten, and it will go down as another moment in history created by a weak and ineffective United States president and vice president. They wouldn't have done this if I were the president. They wouldn't have done it. And they didn't. With time, the situation will only get worse for our country with the kind of leadership that we have right now, which is no leadership. It's probably worse than no leadership. It's negative. It's negative leadership. It must galvanize Republicans, Democrats, independents, conservatives, progressives, libertarians, and everybody else to put strength, respect, and power back into the USA where it belongs. This attack, just like the attack on October 7th or the Ukraine-Russia war, Think of it, Norwood country-busting inflation. You know, inflation is destroying our country. None of it would have happened. It would have never happened if we, if we were president, it wouldn't have happened. It's a dangerous and terrible time for the world. And it's almost the entire fault of incompetent Biden-Harris administration. She who says that she wasn't the border czar. She wasn't the border czar for three years. She was the border czar. She let it be known, I am the border czar. Then she never went to the border. These are, she's terrible. She's worse, she's worse than he is, I'll tell you right now. I want to be nice. They all say, I think he's changed. I think he's changed since two weeks ago. Something affected him. No, I haven't changed. Maybe I've gotten worse, actually, because I get angry at the incompetence that I witness every single day, the way millions of people are pouring into our country. And that's the thing that must change, and it must change quickly. It's great to be back in this beautiful state with thousands of proud, hardworking American patriots. As you know, six days ago, we officially defeated the worst president in the history of the United States, crooked Joe Biden. Have you heard of him? Have you heard of him? He was badly beaten, and everybody went to him and said, Joe, you can't win. You can't win. He said, no, no, let me debate him. Let me debate him, please. That didn't work out too well, either. That was the end. The debate was the end. You can't beat him, Joe. Now we just beat you, Joe. You're going to lose. You got to get out. We want to get out. You got to get out, Joe. There was nothing nice about what they were doing. It wasn't democracy, was it? It wasn't democracy. They were saying, we want you out of the race, Joe, and we want you out here. You're going to lose. These are quotes from some of the fake news. Look at all the fake news back there. Wow. That's a lot. That's a lot of fake news. Man. That's a lot of fake news, Mike. Joe, you're going to lose. We want to put somebody else in. And then I realized last night I was speaking to a great group of people, Christians, all Christians, and they've been horribly treated by this administration. 
Today I spoke to Bitcoin crypto. So I went from Christians to Bitcoin, and now I'm with you in Minnesota. We cover a lot of territory. Think of that. So Christians to Bitcoin to Minnesota. It's a, we cover a lot of territory. And I never mess it up by saying, let me tell you about Bitcoin. I don't do that, no. Remember Biden? Of course, I don't want to talk too much about him, but when he was in Iowa, and he said, it's great to be in Idaho. No, no, you're in. If I ever did that once, it would be the end. Let's say that's the end. He's cognitively impaired. That would be the end. The fake news would go crazy. But I thought last night, as I was speaking to this incredible group of evangelicals and a lot of others of faith, it's, uh, oh, you like that, don't you, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That means our country's coming a long way because you put faith back, you put religion back into our country, it's going to be a much better place. But I thought last night, I said, you know, it's sort of unfair. You have a guy, he says he's great, he's president and all that stuff. They rigged the election, but we won't talk about that. And he say, they say he's president. So he comes out, and he comes out raring to go, and he gets badly beaten. He's losing, and all of a sudden, he's like a fighter. He's losing. Then they took him out of the fight, and they put a new fighter. We have a new victim now, Kamala. We have a new victim. We have a brand new victim. And honestly, she's a radical left lunatic. And she is, when you find out about her, all I have to say is defund the police. That was her big thing. Let's defund the police. And as I often say, you know, politicians don't change. Whatever they say first, that's where they are. They don't change. Wouldn't you say that, Tom? Whatever they say, if they said five years ago, eight years ago, defund the police, she said it like two years ago or three years ago. But so if that's what they say, that's ultimately the, where they want to go. But this was really a coup of and by the Democrats. This was a coup of a man that had 14 million votes. He wanted to run. They wouldn't let him run. They treated him horribly. They said to him, we can do it the nice way or we can do it the hard way. To Joe, he's president. This was a coup with the presidency. They threatened him with the 25th Amendment. They said, Joe, we're going to threaten you with the thing called the 25th Amendment. You're cognitively and physically a mess. And if you don't get out, we're going to take you out with the 25th Amendment. And he said, I'll go. And then the fake news said, oh, he was so brave. He was so brave. <laughs> no, he was forced to leave. So now we have a new candidate to defeat the most incompetent, unpopular, and far-left vice president in American history, probably the most far-left person in American history. Less than four months from now, Minnesota is going to defeat Kamala Harris. And we re remember what I said, a short time ago, a short time ago, she strongly fought for many, many bad things. But to me, I love the police. We're not defunding them. We're going to fund them, fund them. We're going to overfund them. She's just thinking. She's defund the police, and I'm overfund the police. We're going to overfund. We're going to evict this radical and incompetent administration from the White House, and together we are going to make America great again. With your vote this election, inflation will stop, the illegal aliens will be turned back, the cartels will be in retreat, crime will fall, energy prices will plummet, incomes will soar, and a world in chaos will rapidly be transformed into a planet of peace.
And very importantly, and you don't hear this anymore, the words you don't hear under the Trump administration, the American dream will come roaring back bigger, better, and stronger than ever before. The American dream will come back, right? But if a crazy liberal, and she's beyond liberal, Look, she was a failure at every stop. She was a failed vice president. She was a horrible district attorney. She destroyed San Francisco. She was a liberal from the... She was there before all the guys that you're currently reading about, right? If a crazy liberal like Kamala Harris gets in, the American dream is dead. I believe it's dead. I believe it's dead. Over the past three and a half years, Border Czar Harris, which is what she called herself, even the New York Times today, they took an article out of the New York Times, Border Czar. Now, you know, they're deleting everything that says, these people back there are deleting everything. But we already have it. <laughs> you know, three months ago, she was thought of so badly they were just killing her. And now that she's in this position, they're trying to make her into a, let's say, Margaret Thatcher. I don't think so. It's not going to happen. Margaret Thatcher didn't laugh like that, did she? Did she laugh? <laughs> if she did, she wouldn't have been Margaret Thatcher. It's very simple, right? Border Czar Harris allowed almost 20 million illegal aliens to stampede into our country. If she gets another four years, it'll be 40 to 50 million more people in our country, and they'll be using Medicare and Social Security. They will be gone. They'll be wiped out. They'll be destroyed. There won't be a thing your government can do about it. She will kill Social Security and Medicare. As Vice President Kamala Harris cast the tie-breaking votes that created the worst inflation in half a century, I believe the worst inflation that we've ever had. You know, they don't use the real numbers. They don't use the numbers that are really, really bad. But they're bad enough to have the worst just about that anybody can ever even think of or remember decimating working families. And if she wins, inflation will only get worse. It's going to get worse already. Energy and gasoline are going up. You see what's happening more and more. Per gallon, we had it down to $1.87. We actually had it lower than that for a period of time. A Kamala Harris presidency means four more years of extremism, weakness, failure, chaos, and probably World War III. I really believe it. They have no, that's why this happened today in Israel. Shocking that it happened out of nowhere. A Trump victory will bring back leadership, competence, common sense, and strength to the Oval Office. That's what we had. We had no wars. We had no wars. Think of it. We had no wars. Remember when crooked Hillary Clinton used to say, he's going to get us into a war. Look at him. Look at his rhetoric. I said, no, my rhetoric's going to keep us out of wars. That's what happened. We had no wars. They didn't think about it. Putin would have never got in. Iran was broke. I told China, if you buy one barrel of oil from Iran, you're not doing any more business in the United States. And they didn't buy any. They didn't buy any. And we would have had to deal with Iran within one week after the election if the election didn't take that horrible turn. You know, we got millions more votes the second time than we did the first. The New York Times asked me, what happened the second time? I said, the second time we got like 10 million more votes, right? Oh, I never thought of that. The reporter said, oh, yeah, you're right, actually. Let's, let's go to another question. But let's review Kamala's insanely liberal record. As a senator, she was ranked the number one most radical left Democrat in the entire Senate. They say she made Bernie Sanders look like a moderate. He was unhappy with that today, did you see? He said, oh, no, no, I think I might have been more, more liberal than her. They were fighting over who's more liberal. <laughs> if this country has a liberal president, this country is finished, okay, just so you know. And she's weak liberal. Just a few years ago, Kamala Harris co-sponsored Bernie Sanders. $32 trillion, you know what that means? 
That means file for bankruptcy as you're signing the legislation. Everything is gone. Your taxes will go up by four or five times, and it still won't be nearly enough. $32 trillion socialist takeover of the entire U.S. health care system. She endorsed outlawing private health insurance entirely. Many people have private health insurance. It's phenomenal if they work hard and they make a little money. They want to have great health insurance. She wanted it outlawed. She supported giving free taxpayer-funded health care to all illegal aliens. Come on in. Come on in. Now, but just think of it. Everybody that comes into our country, including from prisons, mental institutions, insane asylums, you know, they go crazy when I mention Dr. Hannibal Lecter. You know who that was. They say, why does he keep mentioning Hannibal Lecter? Well, you see, he was a slightly troubled patient in an insane asylum, and he'd love to have you for dinner, you right there. He'd love to have you for dinner. But I mentioned him because we have people like that coming into our country. They're closing their insane asylums all over the world. They're sending their criminals into the United States. Venezuelan crime is down 72 percent because they're sending their criminals and their drug dealers and their prisoners to the United States. And next year, I think, instead of being here, which is a great place, I love this place, we'll go to Venezuela or someplace in South America where they've sent all their criminals to us because we'll have a nice, safe, event. We can go to Venezuela next year, where the crime dropped 72 percent, and we're going to have a nice, safe event, because in Minnesota, you will have lots of people that you don't have now, although many of them are here now. They're just sort of getting used to it. You'll have people from their jails and from their mental institutions in Minnesota. So we'll go to a nice, safe location. She co-sponsored the $100 trillion Green New Scam to abolish oil, coal, and natural gas. She pledged to ban fracking. No fracking. Oh, that's going to do well in Pennsylvania, isn't it? Remember Pennsylvania? I said it. She wants no fracking. She's on tape. The beautiful thing about modern technology is when you say something, you're screwed if it's bad. If you say it wrong, you're screwed. She said, I never said about fracking. Then we play about 90 tapes, you know. <laughs> there will be no fracking. There will be, we will defund the police, she says. I have to be very careful when I say that, because if I say, we will defund the police, imitating her, they'll put me on television tonight saying, Donald Trump wants to defund the police. <laughs> right? So, Got to be very careful, Tom. Sarcasm doesn't work when you have a crooked press. You know, when I imitated him, because Biden, and um, I don't want to waste a lot of time, because it's over now, right? He's gone. I told you he would be. I told you he wasn't going to make it. I told you. In the debate, and they called for the debate. They wanted it early. I said, OK, I accepted every rule. Everyone said, why did you do that? I mean, you accepted CNN. You accepted fake tapper. You accepted all of these things. Why did you do that? So I said, because it's the only way, because they thought I wouldn't do it. So I said, yes, and they were shocked. But we had the debate, right? And he kept saying, like, they'd say, Jake Tapper, fake Tapper. But I have to tell you, they were very fair. They, in my opinion, they were very fair. 95 percent. You can't ask for I was shocked. They, they gained a whole level of respect. I really mean it. CNN. And both of them, they gained a level of respect. Right? Don't you think so? I do. I told them that. I called them both up. But I never saw a debate like this. So, you know, we're given a certain period of time, and I'm running. I got to talk very fast, because there's so many things to say. My mind is rushing, rushing, rushing. Boom, and I hit it right on the butt. But they kept saying to him, sir, you have 92 seconds left. What? What? You have 92 seconds left. And I said, I'll take it. They said, no, you're not allowed to. You have 92 seconds. And he was like, oh, next question. So you have 38 seconds remaining. What? Oh. So we got off to a good start. We got off to a good start. But from the time of the... We're listening here to former President Donald Trump speaking in St. Cloud, Minnesota. We do have to step away for our final commercial break of the hour. We head back out to this. Next.
That would not have been good, but he blew it anyway. But he said, we put the baby aside. If the baby's born, we put the baby aside. And we discuss with the mother whether or not we terminate the baby's life. This is after. This is an abortion. This is, this is called killing. This is called a word beyond abortion. This is called execution. Kamala supports taxpayer funds to pay for abortion for any reason. She even voted against legislation that would require medical providers to give care to babies born alive after an attempted abortion. They're the radical ones. You see, the Democrats really, and not all of them, because most of them agree with us, they're the radical ones, whereas our position is that abortion is now back to the states. They've wanted to have this. This has been going on for 52 years, the way everybody and all legal scholars, they always said this is the way it should be. Everybody wanted it back in the States. Democrats, Republicans, liberals, conservatives, and legal scholars, every legal scholar wanted it back in the States. And then about 14 years ago, people started talking about the number of weeks, the number of months, the number of this, that. They wanted it back in the states where people can decide, and that's what's happening. You look at Ohio, they decided. You look at Kansas, they decided. You look at a lot of different states, they decided. And sometimes it comes out the way certain people want it. Sometimes it didn't. Ohio came out with somewhat of a liberal interpretation, and so did Kansas, which was a little surprising. But it's the vote of the people. Like Ronald Reagan, I believe in exceptions for the life of the mother, rape, and incest. And I also believe that you have to follow your heart. But you also have to get elected. You have to remember that. We have to get elected. And I want to thank the six Supreme Court justices, Clarence Thomas, Samuel Alito, John Roberts, Brett Kavanaugh, Neil Gorsuch, and Amy Coney Barrett for the wisdom and courage they showed on this long-term, very contentious issue. But getting it back to the states puts the question where it belongs with the vote of the people. And it's over time, and you'll see this. Over time, it's going to work out incredibly well in a, a just an issue that was tearing our country apart for years and years is coming to an end, and people are coming together. It's going to be the vote of the people, and it's a state vote. It's the way it was supposed to be. It should have never been in the federal government. So, thank you. I think it's so, I think it's so important to say. I think it's so important to talk about. This November, the American people are going to reject Kamala Harris's crazy liberal extremism on a massive landslide. We're going to have a landslide because it's going to be too big to rig. You know what too big to rig is? We're not going to let her turn the United States into communist San Francisco. You know, 15 years ago, San Francisco was perhaps the greatest, greatest city in the country. And now it's unlivable. It's unlivable. The crime is so bad. The drugs are so bad. She has ruined it. She was the original of the bad DAs. She was the original, the original of the bad prosecutors. She blew them all away. There are a lot of people that say she destroyed San Francisco. She will destroy our country. She will destroy. And moderate, you know what? We can maybe live with moderate, but we have to bring our country back. We've gone down a long way. Remember this, out of the 20 million people, and probably much more than that, that came out, so many, are, they have to be taken out. We're going to have the largest deportation effort in the history of our country. The criminals, we have to get them out immediately. Every voter in Minnesota needs to know that when the violent mobs of anarchists and looters and Marxists came to burn down Minneapolis four years ago, remember me? I couldn't get your governor to act. He's supposed to call in the National Guard or the Army, and he didn't do it. I couldn't get your governor. So I sent in the National Guard to save Minneapolis while Kamala Harris sided with the arsonists and rioters and raised money to bail out the criminals, bail them all out of jail. Remember? Thank you. 
I kept waiting for his call. You remember the guy from CNN, the reporter, so-called? I won't use his name. I don't want to embarrass. Shaved head. Nice looking head, actually. Show. And he goes, this is a friendly demonstration. And behind him, the entire city was burning. Remember, it was like a war zone. The entire city was burning down. And as he was speaking, somebody threw like a hand grenade at his feet and broke his knee. This is a friendly, friendly rally. No, you know what's a friendly rally? This is a friendly rally. By the way, I feel so bad. There are 25,000 people outside that cannot. If you people all go and vote, now, look. There's no way we lose this. There's no way we should lose this state. The other day, Kamala had 972 people. We counted it. They said it was 2,000, and that's okay. But they said she had a massive crowd of 2,000 people. It wasn't. It was under 1,000. But this, they never talk about this. They don't, take a look at that. That's great camera work. It must. I know it's not a news camera because they don't do that. Even the ones that are on our side. They don't show the crowd size. I love crowd size. We've always had the biggest crowds. In history, there's never been anything like this. No, you had to see. We drove from the airport to here, and practically the whole way, there were just thousands and thousands of people. It's incredible. Yeah. If they don't cheat, we win this state easily, okay? They cheat. They have no shame. They cheat. Do you understand that, you crooked people? They're the most crooked. <laughs> they cheat. They cheated in the last election, and they're going to cheat in this election, but we're going to get them. They used COVID to cheat. And this time, they'll try and find something, but we think we have them blocked. They have no shame whatsoever. You know, the amazing thing is the press when they write about this rally tomorrow, they'll say, uh, President Trump was here. He had a small smattering of people, <laughs> a small, delicate crowd of a few people. Sometimes they'll say a few hundred people. They never talk about it, and they never show the crowd, no matter. Look at the corner. See the corner of the room? Turn your camera right up in that corner. See that corner? See that corner up there? See that corner up there? See that corner? Look at that. <laughs> Look at him. Look at that guy. He's going crazy up there. He loves it. He's going crazy. He's got the worst seat in the house, and he's got more attention than anybody. Look at him. But those cameras will never turn, will they, huh? See, I'm watching the cameras. They're not turning because they don't want to turn, because they don't want to show what's happening. 
This is the greatest movement in the history of our country. And if we don't win this election, our country is finished. You know, I used to plead with the fake news, but now I learned it's not worth it, but I'd plead. Show the crowd, show the crowd, please show the crowd. You know, I'd say show the crowd. And they'd keep that camera blaring right on my face. They'd show it as tight as possible, as tight as you can. And I'd say, you got to show the crowd, you got to show it. And I actually thought in 2015 and 2016 when I started, because we had these crowds from the beginning, I have to say now they're bigger and better and stronger, I think, than ever before. Oh, they, 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 they. Bigger and better. Look at that. That's, when I say the corner, you know the place is packed if those seats are gone. But I love that one guy up there. He's going crazy. We've made him a star. But I used to say, Turn the camera, turn it, turn it. I went through, and I never understood, because it's actually good for them. It shows that people are watching something, so I figured it would be easy. Even the bad ones, they should do it. They should show the kind of crowd size. And they wouldn't do it. Even the friendly ones, I won't mention names, okay? But you know who I'm talking about. Friendly, they would never show the crowd. And then I realized what it must be. It's a metal object, and I figured, they couldn't turn the camera because it's on steel tripods. And I figured it's very rigid. And then one night in late 2015, just prior to 2016, there was a terrible fight like over there in the corner where the only way a camera could get the fight would be to do a triple loop, triple tripod loop, <laughs> swirl underneath the people's legs. And that camera, I've never seen any piece of steel bend so much, it was like, <laughs> They got every second of that fight. I said, you mean the cameras do turn very well? And they do. That was when I learned it's fake news. It's just fake news. But they won't show this crowd. They won't show them. But more impressive than this crowd is honestly the people outside. You have thousands and thousands of people. So we love them. We love them. We love them. We do. We love you. We love you all. How good is this place? What a, what a state. I think I should move here. No, but we have a lot of states. They're all, look, they all see what's happening to our country. They're all incredible. We always have packed houses, to put it mildly, like this. I mean, the, the spirit has never, ever been like this. We did great in 2016. We did better in 2020. There's never been spirit like this, Tom. I don't think we've ever had. Pete never had spirit like this. Great hockey player, by the way. Great hockey player. Pop. Great hockey player. We've never had spirit like this, so uh, we have to do it. We're going to turn it around fast. We'll turn this thing around real fast. You're going to be so happy. Kamala urged her followers to donate to the so-called Minnesota Freedom Fund, helping raise $35 million to set loose violent defenders after they shot at police, looted your store, sexually assaulted innocent victims, and committed all sorts of other heinous crimes. One of the criminals Kamala helped bail out of jail was Sean Michael Tillman, very famous now, unfortunately, a repeat offender who, with Harris's help, was set free. She set free many very bad people. And then he went on a murder rampage. He killed a man on a train platform in St. Paul, shooting him six times in the head. Okay? She just turned him free. Ultra-liberal Kamala Harris will deliver crime, chaos, mayhem, and death to our country. I will restore law and order, justice in America. With your vote, we will get the gang members, drug dealers, and dangerous criminals the hell out of our states. 
We'll get them off our streets. We'll put them behind bars. But what we're really going to do is send them back to the country from where they came. You know, a certain country in South America, and by the way, they're coming from all over the world. They're coming from the Congo in Africa, 22 prisoners. Where do you come from, Congo? The good thing about these people is they make our criminals look like really nice people. It's true. Our criminals are now considered fine, upstanding people by comparison to these people. I told Dana White, UFC, do we love Dana White? How good was he at the convention? I said, Dana, I have a great idea. Take your great championship fighters from all over the world, your champions right now, but start another league, called it an illegal migrant league. And then take the best of those fighters and let them fight. I believe the migrants will win. I think it's crazy. You know, I told that little sort of a sarcastic joke. The press went crazy with it. He wants to start a migrant league. He wants to start a migrant league. I was going to tell you when I was up here two months ago, I imitated Biden because he can't find the stairs ever. The stairs, <laughs> stairs, stairs, stairs. Two stairs. Get so many stairs. Get so many stairs. It's just like too many stairs. I don't know what the hell they need them for. But they spend a lot of money. Government often will spend. Government has many more stairs than private. We put up like one stair. They put up like 12. But you always have a lot of stairs, so I'm imitating him, and I'm being funny, and I think I'm being so funny. And I had a tremendous crowd. We had 42,000 people, and I'm saying to the people, you know, when Biden gets off, do you ever notice? First of all, he doesn't make long speeches like that. Second of all, even though he can't read a teleprompter, he never goes off the teleprompter. It's a mess. It's a mess. And I was telling the people, I said, you know, do you ever watch when he's finished with his two-minute speech? It never lasts more than two, maybe three minutes. Three is like a long speech. He goes. <laughs> and he'll point at a stair. And then he'll walk. the stair and then he won't be able to find the stair. This is what we have negotiating nuclear weapons with Putin, with Kim Jong-un, with President Xi of China. No, this isn't going to work out. Bad things are going to happen. But I called my wife. I said, who else could do it? Who else could do it? And 50,000 people. How great was my speech? How did I look? How great was I? It's on speech. I said, First Lady, First Lady, how great did I look? She said, there was something wrong with your hair tonight, it looked like. <laughs> she said, you were okay, but you know, I have 50,000 people. Elvis didn't have 50, and he had a guitar. I had no guitar. I didn't have the years, right? Elvis had a guitar. He had a lot. We love Elvis, right? But he had a guitar. I don't have a guitar. So we'd have like 50, 60, 70. You know, we had 107,000 people in New Jersey, on the Jersey Shore. Wildwood, New Jersey was beautiful. We had 25,000 people in the South Bronx. And it was like a love fest. It was like a love fest. 25,000 people. And I said to the First Lady, how great was I tonight? I didn't like your hair. I didn't like that. I said, who the hell else can get 52, 58, 79? We had 79,000 people in South Carolina. Who can get it, First Lady? And she didn't care about that. Then I called her, finally, I called her, how we, she, she said, you were great tonight. I said, oh, I said, that's great, thank you very much. And I said, how else, I mean, was it really good? Yeah, but there was a problem. Uh, why couldn't you find your way off the stage? They said you couldn't find. So these people, I was playing and having fun, imitating Joe Biden not being able to find the stairs. And they said that Trump couldn't find the stairs off the stage. So I have to be very careful. Tonight, I'll have a very bad night, because I haven't done that little routine in a long time because of that. 
You were good, but you know, it looked really bad at the end, darling. You couldn't find the stairs. What's wrong with you? Nah, I can find the stairs. I'll let you know when it's my time not to find the stairs. I'm going to know, and I'm going to call Tom Emmer. I'm going to say, Tom, it's about time for me to go, okay? Nobody's going to have to tell me. You know, I get up, and I, I don't even read the teleprompters most of the time, so I'll do 80 90% of the speech off teleprompter, and they'll say, he mispronounced a word. He mispronounced a word. They had a word the other day, crooked. I said, crooked, you know. <laughs> And rather than go back and correct, I don't like to go back, because going back means you made a mistake. You just blast through it. He didn't know how to pronounce the word crooked. I've been saying it for years about these crooked politicians that we're dealing. So you can't even make a little bit of a flub. But even after the rioters did hundreds of millions of dollars worth of damage in Minnesota, Kamala Harris declared the so-called peaceful protests, quote, are not going to let up, and they should never let up. We should continue to go forward. In other words, those protests were good. She thought they were wonderful. This woman will be a disaster as our president. This woman shouldn't even be a shot. And you know what? They have many better people than her, but they never gave them the chance. Many better people. I know all of them. Some are very good. Kamala Harris was the original Marxist district attorney. She destroyed San Francisco, and she will destroy our country. She will be the worst president we've ever had. She will be worse than crooked Joe Biden. <laughs> the only thing is she won't have Hunter, so. Oh, uh, where's Hunter? Remember the sign we did, where's Hunter? That became. Remember that one? I said, where's Hunter? The next day, my people are doing shirts. Where's Hunter? That was, that was the big one. We're listening here to former President Donald Trump speaking at a rally in Think Cloud, Minnesota. We have to step away for our first commercial break of the hour. We'll see you back here right after this. He's not a six, he's not an eight, and he's not a 30. He cannot break a hundred. I know, I can look at somebody and I could look at their swing. He can't break 100, but I offered him $1 million. Now, as a six handicap, you can easily break 100. I said, I'll take you to any course you want from the blue tees, which are, you know, just moderate tees. I would give you a $1 million if you can break 100. He decided to turn me down, he turned me down. Then I said, I'll give you 10 strokes aside. I'll give you 10 on the front, 10 on the back. I'll give you 20 strokes. I'll give you a million dollars if you can beat me. He has no chance, okay? No chance. He didn't. But they talk a good game. You know, it's all talk. It's good. It's all pilots come to the White House. I used to be a pilot. My uncle was eaten by cannibals, right? <laughs> Even though the stories say, no, he went down in a crash. But my uncle. If the truck drivers come in, I used to drive a truck. It was a very big truck. These people, I'm telling you, they are so bad. They're so bad. They're just evil people. But more importantly, they're destroying our nation. Nobody respects them. Everybody laughs at them. We're like a bunch of fools. We have a man that can't put two sentences together, and now we're replacing him with worse than he is, a dangerous person who's not smart. You know she couldn't pass a law exam, right? Have you heard that? These are minor details. She couldn't pass a bar exam. She took the bar exam. She couldn't pass it. She thought she'd never be able to pass it. This is what we have wanting to be up. Other than that, she's a very fine woman. I'd like to make that statement. No, she's a radical left lunatic, and she's going to destroy our country, and we're not going to let her do it because we're going to win this election in a landslide. Right? <laughs> We got to, we look at Kamala supports ending cash bail nationwide. No bail. If you kill somebody, that's okay. Come back whenever you're ready. We'll give you a little trial. Put you in jail for about two days. Which means releasing violent criminals immediately after arrest right onto the streets. 
She wants to abolish jail sentences for parole violators. She endorsed the funding of the police, and she sponsored a bill to strip police officers of legal protection. She wants the police officers to go out and protect themselves and defend themselves and hire lawyers. You got to go hire a lawyer. These lawyers would take what they make in one year. They'll take it out of their hides. You can't do that. We're going to give immunity to police so they can do their job. I'm giving federal immunity to police officers so they can do their job. I think it's good. She wants to leave our communities at the mercy of deranged criminals and violent mobs. Unlike Kamala Harris, under my leadership, we will never defund the police, and we will give our heroes the protection, resources, and respect that they so dearly reserve. We're not going to take away their pensions. We're not going to take away their homes. We're not going to destroy their lives and their families' lives. We are joined today by an incredible woman who I just met, took a picture backstage, Shannon Owen the widow of Pope County Deputy Josh Owen last year. Very handsome. Josh was on his 44th birthday, right on his birthday. He was out for a steak dinner with Shannon and his 10-year-old son when he got a call to, it was a problem, a domestic disturbance. A short time later, Shannon got the news that her husband was shot and killed in the line of duty. Shannon. We grieve for your loss, and we know how great a man he was. The police officers told me, told everybody else how great a man he was, and we are immeasurably grateful for your sacrifice. I would love to ask Shannon to come up for a moment. Shannon, can you do that? Shannon? Thank you, everybody. Sorry you couldn't hear me that well earlier. I hope you can hear me now. I really appreciate you giving me a chance to talk about Josh. There's so many of them out there right now that need our help, though. We need to back the blue. And we need to say what Trump said and overfund the police. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon. Incredible. Beautiful family that has to go, she has to go through that. When I'm president, we will always stand with the men and women of law enforcement and their families, and we will have the backs of our police officers 100% of the time, and they will stop crying. As we secure our communities, we will also secure our border on my very first day back in the White House, I will terminate every single open border policy of the Biden-Harris administration. And we will seal the border, and we will stop the horrible invasion into our country. It's an invasion. You know, I built hundreds of miles of border wall. If we didn't have that, but then when we left, we were going to add an extra 200 miles, actually, more than, much more than I said we were going to do. And close up certain sections that we had to be, for legal reasons, keep open for a little while. And they didn't want to do it. I said, wow, they don't want to do it. Does that mean that they actually want? Nobody thought they really wanted open borders. They talked about open borders. But nobody thought that could be possible. But they wanted open borders. We couldn't believe it. No person in American politics has been more of an open border zealot than borders are. Harris, this was a open border. She was talking about open borders for a long time before anybody was even listening. You have to see her tapes and her statements that she made a few years ago before this got fell into her lap, I guess you could say. Very undemocratic. Kamala supported abolishing ICE, and these are incredible patriots. These are tough people that go into a pack of MS-13 gang members in Long Island and you see the fist flying and everything flying. The MS-13, they killed two young girls, 16-year-old girls, walking to school, and they cut them up with a knife because they didn't want to use a gun because it's too fast. They cut them up, two beautiful young kids going to school. They cut them up, 
And uh, MS-13 is probably the most violent of the gangs, although now we have some coming in that might make them look good. But what happened, what happened is ICE went in, saw them. These guys walked right into the middle, and they start swinging. Three minutes goes up, and they're bringing these guys from MS-13 out there unconscious, bringing them out like this and putting them into a paddy wagon. And we took them out and brought them back to their country, or we put them in jail in some place. We're listening here to former President Donald Trump speak at this rally in St. Cloud, Minnesota. We have to step away for another quick commercial break. We'll be back out to this next. I don't want to mention it because the head of the country, the president, South American country, but again, they're all over the world. He's getting great publicity that he's done a wonderful job on crime. He's done a wonderful, wonderful job. He's convinced everybody to live together. And I believed it. Like, for two years, I'm reading about it. I call him, great story in the New York Times. Great, 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 wonderful. Then I realized he's taking his criminals. He's dumping them into our country. But he's doing it differently than some of the others. In Venezuela, they brag about it. He liked to say that he did something with a social experiment. A criminal is a criminal, and they generally stay a criminal, and we don't have time to figure it out. But we're not going to take criminals, and we're going to get rid of the criminals that we've been given by all these countries from all over the world. <laughs> Under borders are Harris. Our communities are being ravaged by migrant crime. Earlier this year, a 15-year-old girl in Massachusetts was raped by a migrant who Biden and Harris flew into the United States. How about that? We're stopping them at the border. We're fighting. The Border Patrol guys are stopping them like crazy at great danger. And then we find out they have airplane flights over the border with thousands and thousands of people landing into the middle of our country. They're flying them then in, in airplanes into our country. So they don't want to stop them. They never will stop them. Nobody understands what good can come of it. Nobody understands why they want to have open borders, because there's nothing good. The only thing they can do is they are trying to register people to vote. That's the only thing we can say. These are not stupid people. Anybody that can cheat on elections like they cheat on elections, these are not stupid people. But you say, why would they want to have open borders and have criminals and mental patients coming into our country? The only thing is, and I'm seeing it more and more, they're fighting like hell. They want to register these people to vote, and we have got to stop it. We can't let them do it. That's the only thing. There's no other reason that they could want this. In upstate New York two months ago, another 15-year-old girl was attacked by an illegal alien they let in, assaulted with a metal pipe, abducted, driven to an isolated area, raped and killed. And in Texas last month, 12-year-old Jocelyn Langari was tied up, sexually assaulted, and strangled to death by two illegal aliens who Biden and Harris released into the United States. They didn't want him to go out. They fought like hell to keep him here. They killed this beautiful young girl. Kamala Harris's deadly destruction of America's borders is completely and totally disqualifying for her to be president. You can't have a person like this as president. No person who deliberately releases these kinds of savage criminals to prey on our youth and our people, not just youth. Elderly people, too, are tremendous targets, should ever be trusted with power. Again, she has no clue. She has no clue. She's evil. The one job Kamala had was the border. That's the only job, and it was the biggest disaster in all of border history. And I'm not talking in this country. I'm talking all over the world. There's never been a border where people cross by the millions and millions. A third world country would stop it even if their people had to use sticks and stones. They use sticks and stones. Nobody's going to allow that to happen, what's happened to our country. We're pleased to be joined today by the current leader of the National Border Patrol Council, a great guy, Paul Perez. And I'm just going to ask Paul to come up to the stage for one minute. Paul, please. So like, like I said earlier, I worked under 
three Democrats, two Republicans. Everybody talked tough on the border. Only one president actually backed it up. That was Donald J. Trump. <laughs> Joe Biden doesn't care about the border. Border czar Harris doesn't care about the border. Do you guys remember the interview when they asked her if she was going to go to the border, and she laughed about it and said, well, I haven't been to Europe. There's nothing funny about border security. Tell that to the families that have lost loved ones, to the victims of illegal alien crime. President Trump is the only one that has stood with them. I've seen it with my own eyes. He's done it. He's strong on the border. Borders are Harris needs to go. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much. Great people. Their, their people are, it's so much easier for them to just say, let's do nothing like they were told to do, but they, they can't do it. They love the country. Brandon Judd, your friend. They love the country, and they, uh, they want to solve the problem. And by the way, I have a couple of people here, actually many people, Front Row Joes. I want to thank you very much, Front Row Joes. These guys, they've come to over 200 rallies. They were at a rough one two weeks ago. I know I saw him sitting up front with a whole group of a lot of Front Row Joes, right? That was a nasty one. That was, a, that was one. We lost a great person, Corey, firefighter, great man. And two people really badly hurt, but they're okay. They're getting better. And I saw the whole group, they had like 40 of them, front row Joes. And I don't know where they get the money. It must be rich as hell, but they follow us all over the place. And we love you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You know, the amazing thing about that night, and I don't talk about it. I told you I, at, during the convention, I said, I'll never, I don't want to talk about it. But one thing that was so amazing, the people that were sitting behind us, we had thousands, tens of thousands of people, but they're mostly here. The people behind us, when this incident took place, nobody ran. And crowd control people will tell you when there's a shot fired, and people know a shot. It's much different sound than firecrackers and everything else. Much different. They know, especially the people that we're talking about from that section, they know a shot better than anybody. And a shot was heard and then another, then another, then another. They saw I was in trouble. I went down, but I grabbed, I looked, I said, wow. But a shot was fired, and when you look at that tape, nobody ran. They saw I was in trouble. This is the most incredible movement. These are the most incredible people. They saw, they were right here. And it was a group similar to this, a little bit larger, twice the size. And those people, and there was one guy, I gotta beat him. He was dressed in black, he had sort of a green floppy hat on. Not only didn't he run, and there were others that did this too. He stood up, bullets are going, and he's looking. Did you see him? Does everyone, I mean, you've seen this clip hundreds of times. People call up, they see it hundreds, they just, but look at that guy. Oh, he's, he's not afraid. And then he's pointing. There he is. And uh, the Secret Service sniper with one bullet, he did a great job. It would be nice if it would have been earlier. <laughs> one bullet from a much further distance. And let me tell you, the Secret Service is taking a lot of heat. But I was under fire, and I was down, and I was here, and they came rushing, and there were bullets coming at us because it was whizzing over my head. And they, I don't know how they didn't get hit, but they had seven or eight guys that absolutely, they, you talk about bravery, they jumped on top of me, they shielded my body. I mean, to a point that was amazing. And we have to remember that too. We have to remember, they understand, they made some mistakes, but I'll tell you what, bravery was incredible because those bullets were flying, they were flying nasty. And they, it didn't stop them. You saw how fast they moved. They, were, they just moved, and they jumped on me. I could show you an arm here. <laughs> These are strong people. But uh, 
but I'll tell you, they were very brave people. That was a very incredible thing. And fortunately, maybe it could have been a little bit earlier, but that sniper for Secret Service, he was a world-class shooter. And from probably 400 yards, that's four football fields, because he was over there quite a bit away. And this guy was over here 130 yards away. So you add it up and you double it or triple it. And one shot, boom, because if that didn't happen, a lot of people, a lot of people would be gone right now. A lot of people. But there was great bravery displayed, and you have to hear that also. You have to hear that. There was no, like, oh, let me get out of here. I'm not, I want to resign immediately from Secret Service. No, there was incredible, every one of them. There wasn't one that was slow. A woman who was on my right, she was shielding me, beautiful person. She was shielding me everything she could. And she got, cri she got criticized by the fake news because she wasn't tall enough. Well, you know, she wasn't tall enough because I'm tall and she wasn't tall enough. And she was criticized. She was so brave. She was shielding me with everything she wanted to take a bullet because the bullets were flying. Incredible. And every one of those guys, but the amazing thing is the people behind me, and you didn't see this because you don't see it, but we had a field as far as the eye could see, much more than what we have here. If you added everything up, it would probably be like that. But even more than that, we had a field as far as the eye could see. Nobody ran. And the crowd experts say when there's a shot fired, like in a soccer stadium, the whole place, they call it a stampede. They run for the gates. Nobody ran because they saw I was in trouble. And it's an amazing thing. I'm telling you, this is, this is a movement the likes of which nobody has ever seen before. And I feel the same way about that. Yeah. Thank you. Those people are great. I just want them to know that. They're all sort of famous now, you know? But it's not, you don't see one person running off that platform. The women, a couple of them ducked, but they got up. They got up, everyone. There's not one person that ran, and some of these guys and some of the women, they stood up in the face of all that noise and all that scary stuff, and with all the blood that they were witnessing, they stood up, and they were looking right, because they wanted to help Secret Service, and they wanted to help the police. They wanted to find out who that guy was. So I just thank that whole crowd, but those people behind me, and the people in front were the exact same thing. You just didn't get to see them. If Bordesar Harris stays in charge, every week we will bring a never-ending stream of illegal alien rapists, bloodthirsty killers, and child predators to go after our sons and daughters. That's what's going to happen. Nothing good is going to happen out of this. If I'm elected, we will immediately deputize the local police and form a massive dragnet to scour the nation for the monsters who are murdering and raping our children, and we will ship them out of our country immediately. And those countries will take them back. You know, under President Obama, they wouldn't take them back. They said, no, sir, we can't do it. They won't take them back. They put planes on the runways. I said, what do you mean planes? They put planes on the runway, so when we fill a plane full of MS-13, we're going to land in Guatemala or Honduras or El Salvador or some country. We can't land the plane. They have planes sitting on the runway. This has gone on for years, so I said, I want them all out of here. They said, we can't for that reason. They have the roads all clogged. I said, how much money do we pay them? Because we pay everybody money because we're so stupid. So the three countries, we paid about $750 million a year for economic development. I haven't seen too much economic development. So I tell them, I said, tell them they're delinquent, they're in violation of everything, and we're not paying them anymore. And they did. They said, we're not paying you anymore. And the next day, I got three calls from the presidents of those three countries. I won't tell you exactly which ones, but you sort of have an idea. And they said, Mr. President, sir, is there a problem? Now, you have to understand, they've been telling Obama and Biden for years, we're not taking your people back. And we just kept paying them like stupid people, pay, pay, pay. I said, they're delinquent. I said, you're delinquent. But they said to me, sir, is there a problem? We seem to have a problem. This was early in the morning. I got three separate calls almost at the same time. 
Is there a problem, sir? Because they were notified there's no more money coming their way. They said, yeah, the problem is all the people, and they send them. They don't just come here. They send them, they put them in caravans, and they send them. And they put most of their bad ones in those caravans. They put the prisoners, they put the mental patients, they put a lot of bad ones. So I said, no, we're not sending you any more money. They said, sir, we would be so delighted to take back MS-13. We love them very much. They took back everybody. From that point on, we took out thousands and thousands of criminals, and we sent them back to their country. They said, we would be delighted to take them back, sir. And we took out thousands and thousands, and like Dwight Eisenhower, people think of Dwight Eisenhower as a moderate, but he wasn't a moderate when it came to the border. He was the toughest guy we had as a president. He hated when people would come across our border and he would deport them immediately. Dwight Eisenhower, you don't think so? We have no choice, but we're gonna have to do it, but we have a much bigger problem than he ever did, and the problem was caused by Kamala and uh, Joe, Crooked Joe, Crooked Joe. I wonder if Joe got any money for doing that. Kamala wants to be the president for criminals and illegal aliens. I want to be the president for law-abiding Americans of every race, religion, color, and creed. Harris is so extreme and unhinged that she has even declared the terms illegal alien and radical Islamic terrorism to be forbidden and unacceptable. You're not allowed to use those terms, but that's what it is. Some of it. If she's elected, she will flood our country with refugees from Hamas-controlled terrorist epicenter in Gaza, the Gaza Strip. She wants to deposit thousands of jihadist sympathizers in Minnesota. You know that. You already have enough. I mean, how the hell do you have these Congress people elected? Ilhan Omar. No, she went to a speech when I was running. When I was first running, and I, you know, in all fairness, I never did this stuff before I'm running. And, and this lunatic was in the audience. She started screaming. I said, who the hell is that? And it's the same crazy person that I watch every night. She's nuts. And she gets reelected by not a lot, but she gets reelected. How do you have people like that? I'm telling you, I was making a speech, and we had a lot of people, and she was like there someplace. And she got up and started screaming. I said, that woman is insane. She's crazy. And you know what? She's become like a major voice in Congress. Can you believe it? She's a sick woman, and she's destroying your state. She's hurting our country. And we shouldn't be electing people like that. They want to turn the Middle East. Remember this. They want to take a look at the Midwest. They want the Midwest to be just like the Middle East. That's what their plan is. Let's turn the Midwest into the Middle East. I think that's not going to work out. But we do not need a jihad in the United States of America, and we're not going to allow it. We're going to do something about it. We're going to be strong. We're going to be brave. We're going to be smart. We're going to listen to Tom Emmer and Pete and all of the other, you got great people in this group, I tell you. You have great people. And we do not need more people who want to burn our flag. I watched yesterday and the day before, they're burning our American flag. And I said, I know they say it's unconstitutional. Well, make it not unconstitutional. You burn our American flag, you should get immediately mandatory one year in jail. We're listening to former President Donald Trump speaking at this rally in St. Cloud, Minnesota. We're going to step away for a quick commercial break. We head back out to this next. It's a fine gentleman. If he didn't like you at a dinner, you were automatically dead before you got home to your lovely wife and family. What happened to dad? Well, he had dinner with Al Capone, never made it back. He was in the foundation of a building down the road. I got indicted more than him for what? Saying the election was crooked. The election was crooked. What a disgrace. You know what? And it works both ways. I mean, they're setting a terrible precedent. This has never happened before. Never, ever. It's never happened before. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. And in the end, they're not after me. They're after you. I just happen to be standing in their way. That's true. 
So just in closing, I have to say, because we're really joined by great people, we're pleased to be joined tonight by many fantastic Minnesota patriots, including House Majority Whip. And I can tell you, he's a tough guy and a strong guy. And we've become, I really believe, really good friends. And he's working the state. He's going to give me the biggest surprise on November 5th. Tom Emmer, great guy. And Mrs. Emmer, more important. <laughs> Thank you both. Thank you both. Great couple. And members of Congress, he's a great hockey player. We're in a big hockey arena, but he's a great one, one of the best. Pete Starber. Pete, thank you very much. Brad Finstad. Brad, thank you. Great. Good job. Michelle Fischbach. Thank you, Michelle. Great job. You have great people here. Minnesota House Republican leader, Lisa Damon. Lisa, wherever you are. Thank, thank you, Lisa. And Minnesota Senate Republican leader, Mark Johnson. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Great job. We have great people. We have great people on this state. These are great leaders. They're patriots. From the moment we take back the White House from Kamala Harris and crooked Joe Biden, I believe we're going to have the four greatest years in the history of our country. We're going to do it fast. We're going to turn it around fast. We're going to get it started fast. Starting on day one, we will end inflation and make America affordable again. It's not affordable now. People are dying. They can't afford bacon. They can't afford anything. To bring down the prices of all goods, we will stop the Biden-Harris war on American energy, and we will drill, baby, drill. We're going to drill, drill, drill. Right. We're going to bring that sucker down. I will terminate the Green News scam, the greatest scam in the history of our country, trillions of dollars being thrown out the window, and I will end the Biden-Harris electric vehicle mandate on day one. And I love electric cars. Elon Musk endorsed me. Elon is a great guy, he endorsed me, but he understands this is right. There's a great place for electric cars, but not 100%. Some people like to drive long distances. There's an expense problem. There's a made in China problem. But I'm a big fan, but it's a different kind of a market. They want every car to be electric. You know, they built in the Midwest. Eight charging stations. Think of it. It's like a gas pump with electricity. They spent $9 billion building eight charging stations. Now, they have another 24,000 charging stations to go. So based on that, it's like $10 trillion. It, the whole thing is crazy. We will pass massive tax cuts for workers, and that includes no tax on tips. No tax on tips. And that'll be done immediately. Immediately. To protect Minnesota workers, I revoke China's most favored nation trade status. Think of it. China has a clause in all its agreements. We are a developing nation. We will be giving much more favorable terms than the stupid United States, which is represented by stupid people. That will be revoked. I had it revoked, and then they gave it back. I mean, you got to ask, how much money did Biden get from China? Could I ask you that? It's a lot, right? Millions of dollars, right? From Russia, they got three and a half million. I know that. Remember I asked? Why did the mayor of Moscow's wife give them three and a half million dollars? And Chris Wallace, who's not the father, believe me, this is not Mike Wallace. This is Chris Wallace. There's a difference of about 300%. But Chris Wallace said, you can't ask a question like that. Six months later, it turned out to be a big question. No, you got three and a half million dollars from the mayor of Moscow's wife. And I will pass the Trump Reciprocal Trade Act. That means that if China or any other country makes us pay a tariff or tax of 100 or 200 or 300 percent, we will make them pay a reciprocal tariff of 100, 200 or 300 percent. You heard us, and we heard you. It's an eye for an eye. It's about time. And just as I did before, I will also rescue the Minnesota Iron Range. I rescued it. It was so beautiful. I'll never forget when I did that, I came up. 
And there were guys that worked there that had lost their jobs for years. These crazy people, they closed it down for no reason. It's the best material, the best iron ore there is in the world. You know that. The best in the world. And it's unlimited. It's not like, oh, gee, unlimited. And I met four guys that were so tough. They never cried, maybe when they were babies. You know, like at one or two. But after two, all four of them were crying. They were standing there bawling like a baby because I rescued their jobs. I gave them something that should have never been taken away. And they were doing great. And then Biden comes in. He has no idea what he's doing. And in his first week, he closed it. His first week. What a shame. But we're going to have it open. Tell those four guys if you happen to meet them. No reason to cry. We're going to get it open again, all right? This is the first time they've cried maybe ever in their whole lives. They were rough-looking suckers, let me tell you. Four years ago, I saved the Iron Range from the radical left, but the Biden-Harris administration shut the Iron Range down. You know, they did it immediately, imposing a brutal 20-year mining ban on a quarter of a million acres. But I'll, I will end that mining ban. We'll do it together, Tom. We will end that ban in about, what do you think, about 10 minutes? I would say 10 to 15 minutes, right, Pete? And tonight I pledge to Minnesota miners that when I'm reelected, I will reverse the Biden-Harris attack on your way of life, and we will turn the Iron Range into a mineral powerhouse like never before. That's what it is. It's a minerals powerhouse. Before I even arrive at the Oval Office, shortly after we win the presidency, and I say we win, we're winning this together, I will have the horrible war between Russia and Ukraine settled, and I will do something that nobody else will be able to do because we're closer than ever. You see that today? I will prevent World War III. I will prevent it. I will restore peace through strength. That's what we had. We didn't have to fight. You know, I knocked out 100% of the ISIS caliphate. Did it in one month. It was supposed to take five years. We have the greatest military in the world. And they're not woke. Some of the stiffs on top are woke, but nobody cares about them. In my next term, we will build a great Iron Dome missile defense shield over our country, a dome like has never been ever seen before. And it will be entirely made in Minnesota and in the USA. It's going to be fully made in the USA. And Minnesota's got a big piece of it. You know, Israel's got it. And today they had a problem where something happened. But they knocked down, six months ago, 300 missiles were knocked down. If they weren't knocked down, it would have been devastation. But they, out of 300, one got through a little bit. It limped through and fell down harmlessly to the ground. But it essentially knocked out all 300. We're going to have something that's even superior. And why shouldn't we have? It's our technology. Why shouldn't we have protection so that we can protect this state and this country? Why shouldn't we? We do it for everybody else. We don't do it for ourselves. America first. I will not cut one penny from Social Security or Medicare, and I will not raise the retirement age by one day, not by one day. And for four years, I didn't. For four years, you saw that, I didn't. By contrast, Kamala Harris cast a tie-breaking vote to cut Medicare by $237 billion. You didn't know that a betrayal of American seniors. She betrayed American seniors. She's the one that cast the final vote. We're going to rebuild our cities into beacons of hope and safety and beauty better than they have ever been before. We'll have to work with Democrat governors and mayors in some cases, but we'll work with them. We got to bring back our cities. Our cities are a travesty. We will take over the horribly run capital of our nation in Washington, D.C., and clean it up, renovate it, rebuild it, make it the most beautiful capital of the world, and get rid of the nightmare of murder and crime. It will be a safe city again. On day one, I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding. We are going to cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content onto the shoulders of our children. And I will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate or a mask 
And, uh, and I will keep men out of women's sports. And I will fully uphold our Second Amendment, which, as you know, is under siege. As you know, I got the full and total support of the NRA. They totally endorse me and support me. But it is under siege, our Second Amendment. And nothing happened with us. We kept it, and we will keep it. You need it. You have to have it for protection and many other reasons. We will protect innocent life, and we will restore free speech, and I will secure our elections. Our goal will be one-day voting with paper ballots, proof of citizenship, and voter ID. Very simple. But until then, Republicans must win. we got to win, win, win. We want a landslide that's going to be so successful. It's very hard. we got to win by a lot. We're going to do the too big to rig. Don't laugh. That's a nice little statement, but it means a lot. If you want to save America, get your friends, get your family, get everyone you know to vote early, vote absentee, vote on Election Day. I don't care when you vote, but you got to vote. Everybody's going, you got to go out and vote. And if you want to help us ensure election integrity, Sign up at protectthevote.com. Protectthevote.com. So in conclusion, from Rochester to Duluth, from Marshall to Minneapolis, from St. Paul to right here in St. Cloud, this state was pioneered by men and women who brave the wilderness and the frontier to build a life for themselves and for their beautiful families. They were farmers and miners, manufacturers and shipbuilders, soldiers and lumberjacks. And they helped build this country into the single greatest nation in the history of the world. But now we are a nation in decline. We are a nation in decline. Can you believe we have to say that? We are a failing nation. We are a nation that has no respect around the world. They laugh at us. We are a nation that has lost its confidence, willpower, and strength. We are a nation that has quite simply lost its way. But we are not going to allow this horror to continue. Less than four years ago, we were a great nation, and we will soon be a great nation again. With our leadership, every disaster Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have created can be fixed, and it can be fixed very quickly. You will be amazed at how quickly it will be fixed. This country will be put back together very soon. Every problem can be solved, and every wrong can be rectified. By this time next year, America's borders will be strong, sealed, and secure. Inflation will be in full retreat. Our economy will be roaring back. Optimism will be surging. The American dream will be thriving again for citizens of every race, religion, color, and creed. Law and justice will reign all throughout our land. You'll be safe again. You'll be free again. Freedom will be restored. The flame of liberty will be burning bright. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, the worst administration in the history of our country, will be a fading memory of the past. They will be a fading memory. And our great silent majority, including the once forgotten men and women of our country, will be the ones shaping America's magnificent future when I am the 47th President of the United States of America. Because we are all Americans, and together we will show November 5th to be the most important day in the history of America. We are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together we will make America powerful again. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again, strong. We will make America proud again.
We will make America safe again. We will make America free again. And we will make America great again. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.